Hello, my friend. My name is Stephen Dalton. I'm an Irish storyteller, and it's my great privilege to be the voice that you listen to as you go to sleep tonight. Many of you have requested that we compile a number of our stories to let you listen throughout the night, and so I present to you this evening all of our magic stories combined, along with a new one about unicorns, healing, kind unicorns who live in a land far, far away from here. Another story that a lot of you have requested. I truly hope that this magic experience brings you to a peaceful place of rest. As you know by now, I love to get requests from you, and one of the most common requests that I see is for a story about unicorns. I know a lot of you have children who listen to the sleep stories as well, and so tonight I have written a story about unicorns, both for adults and your children alike. It's a story where the unicorns live in a faraway forest where no human has ever been, a magical world far away from everything that you or I know. So I hope you like it. Okay, let's do the relaxation session now. I'm going to count down from 10 to 1, and as I do, allow yourself to let go more and more. 10. Feel the support beneath you, the bed, the floor, and the earth. Allow that feeling of support to give you permission to let go just a little more. You are being held. You are safe. Nine. Feel into your body now. Notice what's happening throughout. Are you holding anywhere? Have you got tension anywhere? See if you can release that now, even a little. Maybe you're holding in your feet, maybe in your hands, or maybe in your face. Just let go now. Your body has worked hard for you today. It deserves rest now. You are safe. Allow my voice to be an anchor of safety tonight that brings you to a peaceful place. Seven. This is your time. You deserve this time. You deserve rest and sleep. We all do. Enjoy.
enjoy this moment. Six. The day is done. Whatever has been, has been. Whatever will be, will be. Whatever thoughts you have about today, they're not useful now. If they're still arriving, say hello to them and then watch them float away like leaves on a river. And the same goes for any thoughts about anything else. It's time to rest your mind now. Five. Just notice your breath for a moment now. As it enters and leaves your body. By noticing the breath. It can bring us to a place. Where we are more in the present. Don't do anything special with your breath. Just notice it. And now back to my voice. Four. Begin to engage with your imagination now. Begin to see a forest. A vast and beautiful forest. A serene place. A peaceful place. Three. Allow a feeling of gratitude for this moment. For the simple things like your breath. The shelter you have tonight. Maybe even allow a feeling of coziness. Two. Remember. There is always peace within you. It lives within you. It's just waiting to be found. See, can you find it tonight? One. Letting go completely now. As I tell you. Tonight's sleep story. There once was a forest. Now this was no ordinary forest. Firstly, because it was in a land that no human has ever heard of or even dreamed of 
until now. Secondly, because this forest was more beautiful and serene than any human has ever laid eyes upon. But most importantly, what made this forest so special was that every creature that lived there showed only kindness to each other, and all of them were particularly fond of the unicorns. Yes, I said it, unicorns. There was a pride of the most noble, most gracious, and most kindly unicorns anyone has ever known. And yes, you guessed it, like the forest, these were no ordinary unicorns, for these were the first of all unicorns that ever existed. They were led by Earless, a majestic creature whose coat shimmered with the soft colors of dusk. Her mane flowed like the finest silk, catching the light in a way that seemed to paint the air with colors. Her eyes held the wisdom of the ages, a depth of kindness and understanding that spoke of her gentle leadership. Alongside Earless were her companions, each unique and splendid in their own right. There was Kylum, with a coat as blue as the clearest sky, and a mane that seemed to hold the sparkle of the stars. His presence was as soothing as the night sky bringing calm to those who gazed upon him. Then there was Solara, radiant and warm like the sun, her golden mane a cascade of light. She brought cheer and brightness to the forest lifting the spirits of all creatures with her joyful trot. Among them also was Sylvan, whose coat blended with the very greens of the forest. He was a guardian of sorts, a protector of the trees, and the whisperer of the leaves. His presence ensured that harmony reigned within the woodland. The youngest of the bride was Lumi, a small white unicorn with a playful spirit. Her coat seemed to hold the very essence of moonlight, and where she pranced, a trail of soft, glowing light followed, illuminating the paths for 
for the forest dwellers at night. These unicorns, with their unique gifts, roamed the forest, guardians of peace and purveyors of kindness. They were revered by all creatures, from the tiniest of insects and the tiniest of fairies to the ancient wise trees that had stood for centuries. As dusk began to fall upon the land, the unicorns gathered at the heart of the forest, a clearing where the trees opened their branches to the sky above. Tonight, as every night, they would embark on their sacred task to heal anyone who needed healing, to show kindness to anyone who needed kindness and to offer wisdom to anyone who felt lost. You see, these unicorns were the pillars of the forest, the gatekeepers of kindness and the makers of peace. And so it was at night time, when the two sons had said goodbye to the day, that the unicorns became most strong in their healing powers. And now the forest was vast, and so they needed to feel where they may be needed. They would stand in a circle, in silence, and deeply listen into the darkness. In this velvety embrace of night, under the watchful gaze of the three moons, the unicorn circle was a sacred ritual, a moment of deep connection to the life force of the forest. Earless would stand at the center, her head bowed in concentration, as the others formed a ring around her. The air within the circle seemed to hum with a palpable energy a gentle vibration that resonated with the heartbeat of the forest itself. One by one, the unicorns closed their eyes, extending their senses into the vast expanse of the forest. They listened, not with their ears, but with their hearts, attuning themselves to the delicate balance of life 
that thrummed through the woods. The whispers of the Sylvanians. The human-like creatures that lived in high tree houses. The fluttering dreams of the winged fairies and the soft footsteps of shy forest nymphs. As they listened, a faint melody reached their ears, a melody tinged with a touch of sadness. It was coming from the upper reaches of the forest, where the tree houses of the Sylvanians were perched among the ancient branches. One family in particular seemed to call out for comfort. A small group of Sylvanians whose harmonious song had dimmed to a mere whisper. Breaking their circle, the unicorn set off towards the Sylvanian dwellings, moving with a grace that seemed to defy the very gravity of the earth. Their hooves left trails of glowing light on the forest floor. A path of stars in the darkness. Earless led them. Her horn aglow with a soft light that illuminated their way through the shadowy woods. As they neared the tree houses, the reason for the Sylvanian's melancholy became clear. In one of the homes, a family huddled together their faces etched with worry. A young Sylvanian lay in her bed, her brow furrowed with discomfort, her parents sitting by her side, their eyes reflecting their helplessness. Earless approached the treehouse, her light casting a gentle radiance through the windows. The worried parents looked up, their expressions shifting from concern to awe as they beheld the majestic unicorn. Earless nodded to them, a silent promise of help, and they opened their window to allow her healing presence to enter. The unicorn's horn began to glow brighter, a beacon of hope in the dim room, a warm, soothing light emanated from it, filling the space with a sense of peace and comfort. 
the child's eyes fluttered open, and upon seeing Earless, a smile broke through her discomfort. With a gentle nudge of her horn, Earless touched the child's forehead, and the light enveloped her, seeping into her skin, easing her pain, smoothing the creases of worry from her brow. The room was filled with a serene hum, a sound that seemed to resonate with the very heartbeat of the forest. As the light receded, the child's eyes closed once more. This time, in peaceful sleep. Her parents whispered their thanks, their voices a mixture of relief and wonder. Their task at the treehouse complete, the unicorns continued their journey through the forest. Now, guided by the whispers of the woodland and the soft glow of their own magic, the unicorns made their way to the river. A silver ribbon that flowed through the heart of the enchanted forest. The river banks were lined with willow trees. Their branches trailing in the gentle current. And it was here that a family of fairies had made their home. The fairies, with their gossamer wings and luminescent forms, were a common sight along the river, dancing in the moonlight and singing songs that were older than the hills. But tonight, their usual merriment was subdued. For the young prince of the fairies, Alaric, sat alone by the water's edge lost in thought. Alaric, with his wings shimmering under the light of the three moons, was a vision of youthful wonder. Yet, his eyes held a depth of contemplation that spoke of questions too large for his tender years. He gazed at the reflection of the moons on the water, seeking answers in their lunar dance. As the unicorns approached, their presence immediately felt by all the creatures of the river. Airless stepped forward, 
her luminous form, casting a gentle light around the young fairy prince. The other unicorns formed a semicircle behind her. Their collective wisdom and peace enveloping the area. Alaric looked up, his face reflecting the calm radiance of the unicorns. I seek understanding, he said, his voice a mere whisper, yet carrying the weight of his earnest quest. There are questions in my heart, and I cannot find peace. Erlis bowed her head in acknowledgement of his plea. She moved closer her horn glowing with a soft, encompassing light. Speak your questions, young prince, she said, her voice like a melody. And let the wisdom of the ages bring you solace. Alaric took a deep breath, his wings fluttering slightly with nervousness. I wonder about the purpose of our existence, the reason behind our endless dance of day and night. Why do we toil? Why do we dream? Where do our spirits go when the forest sleeps? Erlis listened, her eyes filled with compassion. The dance of life, she began. is a great wonder that consists of so many parts, experiences, emotions, and connections. Each of us, whether fairy or unicorn, tree or stream plays a part in this grand design. We toil to contribute to the harmony of the forest. We dream to reach beyond what is seen to touch the realm of possibilities. Our spirits are part of the eternal cycle of the forest. When we sleep, our essence mingles with the stars, with the wind, with the very essence of life. We are never truly apart from the magic that binds us all. Alaric listened, the weight of his questions easing with each word spoken by Airless. The wisdom of the unicorns 
ancient and profound, seeped into his being, calming the turmoil in his heart. As the unicorns finished imparting their wisdom, a sense of peace settled over the riverbank. Alaric, now at ease, bowed in gratitude, his heart lighter, his mind clearer. The fairies resumed their dance, their movements a celebration of new found understanding. The unicorns, their task complete, moved away from the river, their forms blending into the night as they continued their journey through the enchanted forest. Guided by a silent call, the unicorns ventured further their hooves leaving trails of light that faded into the night. Deep in the heart of the enchanted forest, where the trees grew tall and the moonlight wove through the leaves, lived a creature seldom seen, a guardian of the ancient grove, the great owl known as Thalos. Thalos, with feathers that seemed to hold the very wisdom of the forest, had eyes like shimmering pools of knowledge. He perched atop the oldest tree in the forest. A silent sentinel who watched over the land with a gaze that missed nothing. Tonight, Thalos seemed troubled. His usually calm demeanor was ruffled, and his hoots echoed with a tone of concern. The unicorns approached him with reverence, aware of the respect this ancient being commanded. Peerless, with her usual grace, stepped forward. Great Thalos, we sense your unease. She spoke softly, her voice a soothing balm in the stillness of the night. Share with us your burden that we might offer our aid. Thalos shifted on his perch, his eyes reflecting the light from Earless's horn. The harmony of the forest is in disarray, he began, his voice deep and resonant, a 
shadow creeps at the edges of our land. A discord that threatens the balance we all cherish. The unicorns listened intently. Their own senses attuned to the subtle energies of the forest. They too had felt a change. A slight but noticeable shift in the natural order. Let us lend our magic, our light, to restore what has been disturbed, proposed Solara, her voice as warm as her sunlit coat. The unicorns gathered beneath Thalos their horns collectively glowing, creating a beacon of pure, healing energy. Thalos spread his vast wings, embracing the light, channeling it through the network of trees through the veins of the forest. As the light spread, the shadow at the forest's edge began to dissolve, its presence fading into nothingness. The natural harmony of the land was restored, the balance returned by the combined efforts of the unicorns and the great owl. Thalos hooted softly, a sound of gratitude and relief that resonated through the branches. The forest owes you its peace, he said, nodding to the unicorns. With their task complete, the unicorns retreated into the heart of the forest once more. Their mission of peace and healing an eternal pledge to the magical realm they called home. Under the canopy of the starlit sky, the unicorns returned to their glade, a hidden sanctuary embedded by the ancient trees of the enchanted forest. The three moons hung high, casting a serene glow over the land. Their journey through the night a path of kindness and healing had drawn to a close, and now it was time for rest. Airless, with her coat shimmering like a reflection of the night sky, chose a spot beneath a towering tree whose leaves whispered ancient lullabies in the breeze. 
she lay down gracefully, her presence a calm anchor in the quiet of the forest. The other unicorns, each weary yet fulfilled from their night's work, found their own peaceful corners in the glade. Calum settled near a brook that gently wove its way through the clearing, its waters carrying the soft music of the night. His deep blue coat merged with the shadows. The occasional sparkle from his mane mirroring the stars above. Solara curled up in a patch where moonbeams filtered through the branches her golden mane catching the light surrounding her with a halo of soft light. Her gentle breaths were in sync with the rhythm of the forest at rest. Sylvan Ever the guardian chose a spot where the trees stood tallest, their branches a protective embrace. His green coat blended with the verdant surroundings, making him seem like an extension of the forest itself. Little Lumi found comfort in the center of the glade, her pure white form glowing faintly in the moonlight, a beacon of innocence and peace in the heart of the forest. As they settled into sleep, the forest around them continued its nocturnal chorus. Crickets sang, owls hooted in the distance, and the leaves rustled softly. But within the unicorn's glade, there was a sense of profound peace. In the trees above, Thalos, the great owl, kept a watchful eye. His presence, a silent vow of protection over these guardians of the forest. He gave a quiet approving hoot as he saw the unicorns drift into slumber, their dreams as peaceful as the night sky. The unicorn slept under the stars 
their forms a part of the life of the forest, their spirits a part of the magic that pulsed through the land. In their rest, they were not just creatures of legend, but symbols of the peace and harmony that reigned in this untouched mystical world. Soon, you find yourself walking in the village. Remember, you feel so safe here. The village is beautiful, and it seems you have arrived very early in the morning. It seems that whoever lives in these little houses is asleep. You see a signpost that says, Welcome to Eldenbrook. And there is something about this place that makes you feel like you have entered another world entirely. Then, as you walk through the little village, looking at the little grass-covered houses, with their circular little windows. You hear the voice of someone behind you. Oh, hello, someone says. And you turn to see a very interesting looking creature. I'm Eldred, he says. He seems like a gentle soul, with a heart full of kindness. You get talking, and he tells you that he is a halfling. He also tells you that this is a land of halflings, dwarves, and elves, and the odd human who stumbles into the land. You find yourself standing at the entrance of his little house, and you are welcome by the sweet fragrance of blooming daffodils and the gentle hum of distant conversation. It just so happens that this morning Eldred is baking delicious honey cakes, and he invites you to sit down and enjoy his beautiful little garden. You already feel so welcome and safe here, in this land 
where it feels like anything is possible. Everything is familiar, but somehow different. Perhaps just glazed by a little touch of magic. While Eldred is in the kitchen, you close your eyes as you sit in the garden, and you take some deep breaths, savoring this moment, this moment of otherworldliness. Soon, Eldred invites you to join him on one of his peaceful walks in the Feywin forest. As you walk, you realize that you need to slow down a bit. Everything here seems to be more relaxed. Step by step, you let go of everything from our world and give yourself permission to immerse yourself in this world. You look around and notice the grandeur of this place, the majesty of the trees. the scents of the blooms. Eldred seems so at peace in this place. It is like he knows every blade of grass, every little bird personally. Then, you hear a voice say, Oh, hello, Eldred. You turn to see that the voice has come from somewhere nearby, but you can't quite figure out where. Then, you see Eldred walk toward the most beautiful oak tree that you have ever seen, and he hugs it. It then becomes clear to you that the tree was the one who spoke. You watch, mesmerized, as Eldred and the ancient tree share a conversation. Their voices carrying a warm familiarity, like old friends which they obviously are. You observe the way Eldred's hand 
gently pats the bark. The way he listens carefully and how he occasionally chuckles at what the tree says. After what feels like hours in the forest, the sun begins to cast longer shadows and Eldred suggests you go back to his cozy cottage. The journey back is serene. Eldred suggests that you take your shoes off and enjoy the feel of the rich earth beneath. It is deeply calming to connect with this land as you walk happily along with your new friend, enjoying the sound of birds singing, and perhaps you feel a little glow of joy at the prospect of this new friendship with this most welcoming of beings. Eldred's home has the most beautiful little round door and little round windows. When you step in, you have to bend down. And when you get in, it feels so cozy. The walls are lined with wooden shelves filled with all manner of curious items. Sparkling crystals, old scrolls, and strange-looking plants. Eldred lights a little fire And after a hearty dinner and sharing some light-hearted stories, he shows you to a cozy bedroom where you can still hear the gentle fire in the hearth and the peaceful silence of the night invites you into a restful sleep. You feel so safe here, so welcome.
the next morning. Eldred is already up and ready. He has made you the most delicious breakfast. And as you sit and eat, he tells you that today you'll take the dragons out for a little spin. Dragons, you ask? Oh yes, Eldred replies. They're very friendly, and they love to welcome my guests. They'll take us to see the great river and even the seven coasts. Eldred leads you outside, where you're met with the sight of two majestic dragons, enjoying the warm morning sun. Their scales shimmer beautifully, reflecting the sunlight in an array of colors. They're quite big, but there's an aura of peace and tranquility about them. Eldred introduces you and tells you that the dragon's names are Alicia and Athar. He gently pats Athar's snout and you watch in awe as the dragon humbly dips its head in response its eyes gleaming with a gentleness that's almost human-like. Alicia, the smaller of the two, playfully nuzzles into Eldred's side, making him chuckle. With Eldred's guidance, you climb onto Athar's back, finding a comfortable seat between his wings. The dragon's scales are warm and smooth under your touch. And you think, perhaps, that you have never felt anything like this. You feel very safe as you find yourself gently nestled between Athar's wide, strong wings. Your hands softly gripping the ropes that have been attached so you can feel extra safe. Beside you. Eldred gives you an encouraging nod before signaling to Alicia and with a powerful leap Alicia surges into the sky Eldred 
holding on with practiced ease. Athar follows right after. His mighty wings beating the air in a rhythmic symphony. You see the ground quickly look smaller and smaller as you rise higher and higher and for some beautiful reason as you drift into the sky you feel safer and safer the sky is clear and blue above you and a soft gentle breeze moves around you, carrying with it the fresh scent of the forest. The sight that meets your eyes is simply breathtaking. You fly over the great river Eldred mentioned, its waters a brilliant shimmering blue, a lifeline that cuts a path through the rich, dense greenery. Here and there, you see animals coming for a drink, oblivious to your presence high above them. You fly past great mountain tops, the Thandwheel Mountains look majestic in the morning light. And then you reach the seven coasts, the spectacle you'll never forget. Each one is unique and breathtaking. From cliff-lined shores to wide expanses of white sand beaches, you see coves surrounded by lush, flowering vegetation and beaches that glitter with what looks like diamonds. The sea is calm and tranquil below you. Turquoise waters abound. You fly all day, taking rests in beautiful places, by the beach, by the rivers, on mountains. 
mountain tops. And soon, you see that the sun is starting to descend, and Eldred takes that as the cue to return to the village. Athar begins the gentle descent, the cool evening air feels refreshing against your skin. As you dismount the dragon, you thank Aethar, feeling a deep connection to this magnificent creature. You pat his snout softly, and he once again humbly dips his head. The dragons then fly off into the night, and you sit outside with Eldred, enjoying his little grass-covered home. You listen to the sounds of the night. Then, a soft and wise sounding voice breaks the silence. Hello, Eldred, the voice says. The old halfling looks up at the tree next to the little house to see his old friend, the owl, the owl that goes by the name of Thael. Ah, my friend Thael, Eldred responds with a warm smile, we have a visitor. You look up, noticing the graceful curve of the owl's wings and the intelligence shining in his large round eyes. Thale looks at you, a sense of familiarity in his gaze. Welcome, friend, Thale speaks in a soft voice, soft as the whispering wind. You, Eldred, and Thale the Owl sit for hours by a little campfire, sharing tales and hearing golden wisdom from both of your new friends. Under the stars, in the magical Eldland, you find yourself enchanted, captivated, and lose yourself in this magical moment. A yawn escapes you, as the tiredness from your exertions comes upon you and you begin to feel very sleepy. 
very sleepy and very safe at the end of a day where you flew high in the sky with Eldred and his dragons. Once upon a time, in a magical land, far, far away, there was a lush and enchanting forest. The forest was vast, covering thousands of acres of land with its dense vegetation and towering trees. It was a place where time seemed to slow down, and the only sounds were the rustling of leaves, the song of birds, and the whispers of the wind. This magnificent forest was home to a myriad of creatures, both big and small, and among them was the most unique and extraordinary of all, a giant talking tree that went by the name Barklore Whisper Root. Barklore was not like other trees in the forest. He stood proudly at the heart of the woodland, his enormous trunk stretching high into the sky, and his branches extending out like welcoming arms. His bark was a beautiful tapestry of colors, with shades of deep brown, rich green, and warm gold. As the sun's rays danced upon his leaves, they created an awe-inspiring canopy that shimmered like a sea of emerald and jade. Now this forest was a place where harmony and balance prevailed and Barklor played a vital role in maintaining this delicate equilibrium. He was the guardian of the forest and a source of wisdom and comfort for all of the creatures that called this magical place, their home. Barklor had lived in this forest since he was a tiny seed, many, many hundreds of years ago. He was constant, reassuring, 
and he was filled with a calming energy that transcended time. As the sun would begin its slow descent toward the horizon, casting the forest in a warm golden light, the little creatures of the forest knew it was time to return to Barklore. They had spent the day exploring the vast expanse of their woodland home, playing with one another and foraging for food. But as the evening approached, they began their journey back to the safety and comfort of Barklore Whisper Root, the giant tree that they had come to know as their protector and friend. Among the creatures that lived within Barklore's many branches and rooms were the tiniest of birds, their feathers a brilliant iridescent hue that caught the light and seemed to change colors as they flitted through the air. There were also playful squirrels, their bushy tails flicking as they leapt from branch to branch, chattering excitedly about their day's adventures. And then there were the delicate butterflies, their wings adorned with intricate and beautiful patterns. And as the animals made their way back to Barklore, they would even chat with each other sharing stories of their escapades and enjoying the beauty and serenity of the forest that surrounded them. The journey home was a treasured ritual, a time for the creatures to connect and bond as they prepared for the soothing embrace of the night. When they would arrive at the base of the giant tree, they would pause for a moment, their gazes lifting to take in the majesty of their towering friend, and they would feel a deep sense of gratitude for Barklore's presence and the sanctuary that he provided for them. And often, as if Sensing their appreciation, the tree's leaves would rustle gently, and a soft breeze 
would carry his comforting voice to their eager ears. Welcome home, my dear friends, Barklor would say, his voice soft and kind. The day has been long, and now it is time for rest. Come, let me share with you the tales of the stars and the secrets of the moon, for they will guide you into the most peaceful and restorative slumber. One by one, the creatures would begin to make their way up into Barklor's outstretched branches, climbing or flying to their cozy little rooms that had been meticulously crafted from the tree's loving embrace. Each room was unique, tailored to the specific needs and preferences of its occupant. The birds found their homes in intricate nests woven from the softest materials, while the squirrels nestled into the hollows lined with moss and leaves. The butterflies, on the other hand, found solace in the delicate petals of flowers that bloomed among Barklor's branches, their vibrant colors, a perfect complement to the butterfly's own magnificent wings. As the creatures settled into their little rooms, they sighed contentedly, feeling the love and warmth that radiated from Barklor's being. The tree's gentle voice like a soothing lullaby washed over them, quieting their minds and easing their tired bodies. Long, long ago, Barklor began. The stars were born from the laughter of the moon. As she looked upon the world with her tender, loving gaze, she was so filled with joy and wonder that her laughter 
Rang through the heavens, scattering shimmering droplets of light that transformed into the myriad stars we see today. They filled the night sky, creating intricate patterns and constellations that told the stories of the earth, the heavens, and all of the creatures that dwelled within them. As he spoke, his words wove a tapestry of images and emotions in the minds of the little creatures, transporting them to a world of celestial beauty and timeless wisdom. In their mind's eyes, they saw the birth of the stars. They felt themselves floating among the stars, their hearts swelling with love as they gazed upon the countless sparkling lights that adorned the heavens, a testament to the boundless joy of the moon. The stars have watched over the world since the dawn of time, Barclore continued, his voice a gentle caress that seemed to envelop the creatures in a tender embrace. From their lofty vantage point, they have borne witness to the ebb and flow of life, the changing of the seasons, and the countless joys and sorrows that have touched the hearts of all living beings. The stars have seen empires rise and fall Friendships forged and lost, and love bloom in the most unexpected of places. Barclore's words painted vivid scenes of the world's history 
unfolding before the creatures, their minds filled with visions of the ancient past. They saw the first tender shoots of life emerging from the soil, the steady rhythm of the seasons as they danced through time, and the countless moments of happiness and heartache that had shaped the world they knew. And though they may seem distant and unreachable, the stars are always with us. their light, a constant reminder of the beauty and magic that exist within and around us. They are our guardians, our guides, and our storytellers. Their celestial patterns weave tales that resonate deep within our souls. As the creatures listen, to Barclore's soothing voice, they felt connected to the stars, to the moon, and to the universe as a whole. And so, my dear friends, Barclor whispered, his voice growing softer as the night deepened and the first stars began to appear in the sky. As you close your eyes and surrender to the sweet embrace of sleep, remember that you are never alone. The stars are always with you, watching over you with their gentle light and guiding you with their ancient wisdom. They are a constant reminder of the love and beauty that exists within and around you, and the infinite possibilities that await you in the world of dreams.
as Barklor's voice faded into the night. The creatures felt a deep sense of contentment wash over them as they became more and more cozy in their little houses in the tree and their hearts while they swelled with love for their giant tree friend and the magical world that they called home and of course they knew without a doubt that they were truly blessed And so it was, as the moon rose high in the sky and bathed the forest in its silvery light, the creatures drifted in to a deep and restorative sleep. Their dreams filled with the wonders of the universe and the gentle lullaby of their beloved Barklor. Now, Barklor could feel the gentle breathing of the little creatures and sense their dreams. His branches cradling his cherished friends seemed to sigh contentedly knowing that they had provided the creatures with the comfort and warmth that they needed. With his duty fulfilled, and his friends safely asleep. It was now time for Barklor to find rest. As a guardian of the forest, he rarely allowed himself the luxury of slumber. But tonight, the magic of the stars seemed to envelop him, encouraging him to close his eyes and surrender to the tranquility and the safety of the night. And as Barklor's consciousness began to drift, the stars above seemed to twinkle 
even more brightly, as if to acknowledge his trust in their protection. As Barklor finally succumbed to the sweet embrace of sleep, he remained connected to the stars, their celestial energy coursing through his very being. Providing him with the strength and wisdom that he needed to continue his role as the forest's guardian. And all around him, the forest itself seemed to join in his slumber. The trees, the plants, and even the gentle breeze, providing a protective and comforting cocoon. And so it was. That night. That special night. Barklor and his friends slept peacefully, their hearts filled with the magic and the beauty of this enchanting world that they called home. There once was a little village, and in this little village, there was a little house, and in this little house, there was a little bed. Now to look at, the bed was nothing special. It looked like, well, it looked like a bed. But this bed, they said, was magic. It's a moonlit night in the little village. And tonight, you are the lucky inhabitant of the little house. It glows with a soft candlelight, and you enjoy the calming nature of the house. It's so cozy here. You are away from everything you know. And you are so welcome here. You lie 
in the little bed, under the cozy, comforting covers. You take some deep breaths here. In and out. In. And out. In. And out. And you are feeling very sleepy. You feel so safe in the magic bed. And you are looking forward to whatever your dreams have in store for you. Full in the knowledge that only good things can come from this magic bed. Your eyes grow heavy, and soon you drift into a deep, rejuvenating slumber. And the magic of the bed begins to come into play. As you sleep, the bed takes you, almost like it's flying. And you see below, down to the little house and the little village. You feel yourself transported away from everything. You have nothing to do here. Soon, an ancient forest comes into view. As the bed lands in the center of it, It is beautiful here. The air is imbued with a delicate scent of wildflowers. Each little petal releasing its sweet perfume into the night. The moonlight filters down from above through the lush canopy of ancient trees. And it's comforting, a constant friend above. You stand up And before you is a path carpeted with vibrant moss, adorned with tiny glowing mushrooms that twinkle like stars. The rustling of leaves accompanies the soft little whispers of woodland creatures 
hidden among the ferns and shrubs. You follow the winding trail, captivated by this enchanting place. It is like the great ancient trees around you are welcoming you. As you go further into the forest, you see tiny orbs of light flicker and dance around you. These are the fairies. Tiny little beings that radiate a soft glow as they fly around with their gossamer wings. They flit from flower to flower. Sprinkling shimmering dust that awakens the little petals below. As they sprinkle their dust, the forest comes to life. In a kaleidoscope of colors, like a painting coming to life. The fairies beckon you to join their joyful dance, twirling and spinning in the moonlight. You feel weightless. It's as if they impart their freedom upon you. It's like you are flying. You catch glimpses of their little faces, smiling and laughing. You hear their tinkling laughter, beautiful and pure. They guide you to secret clearings where the moonbeams create natural stages and the fairies perform for you their enchanting ballet of light. Time loses meaning in this ethereal world. You can almost feel the gentle caress of the breeze carrying the stories of the ancient trees, whispering secrets 
only they know. The magic of the fairy forest seeps into your very being. It fills you with a childlike wonder, as if you have stepped into a realm untouched by time. This moment, as you lie back in the embrace of the magic bed, surrounded by the enchantment of the fairy forest, and your new little friends. You allow yourself to surrender to the beauty and serenity of this place. As you fall into an even deeper sleep, the magic bed carries you away from the fairy forest. It glides through the starlit sky. taking you to another serene destination. You find yourself nestled in a cozy, beautiful, moonlit cove where gentle waves caress the shore with a rhythmic lullaby. The moon shines overhead shining down on the gentle waters. Little fireflies twinkle like tiny stars. Their luminous bodies lighting up the night with a soft, mesmerizing radiance. The air is filled with a sense of tranquility, as if time has slowed down to match the serene pace of the night. You sit on the bed, and the bed sits on the beach. How cozy, how lovely to have a bed on the beach. You lie back, watching the 
fireflies dance around you, and beyond them, the stars shining above, the sound of the waves gently caressing the beach. calms you even more. You feel safe here as the gentle breeze brushes against your skin, carrying with it the scent of the sea. mingled with the fragrant blooms of nearby coastal plants. With each breath, you absorb the serenity of the moonlit cove, feeling a sense of peace wash over you. The magic bed cradles you in its embrace, providing a safe and nurturing space to unwind and find solace in the soothing beauty of this nighttime sanctuary. For a moment, you decide to step off the bed and to feel the cool, refreshing sand beneath your bare feet. fireflies that dance still over the water, and as you gaze, you see that they have arranged themselves into a glowing message for you. You are so curious to read what it says. And then you make it out. It says you are granted one wish. Whatever that wish may be. Make it now. Wish something good for your life. For those around you. Allow that wish 
granted to you by the magic bed to become part of you. Allow yourself to believe that it can happen and it will. Remember, it may not be exactly as you imagine, but it will be right for you. You are being taken care of. You are safe. You are loved. Now, you get back into the magic bed. You wrap yourself in the cozy blankets. And fall deeper and deeper into such a beautiful sleep. And the magic bed carries you. To a place unlike anything you have ever seen. You have arrived at a serene and mystical place where a gentle river flows beneath the surface of the earth. The soft glow of luminescent stones illuminates the surroundings, casting a warm and comforting light. Now, as if by some other magic, the bed lands on the river, the gentle, hardly flowing river, and it and you start to float along this tranquil, serene river. You glide gracefully through its underground path. The water of the river appears to be made of liquid starlight. It shimmers with a gentle glow. It invites you to put your hand into it. And as you do, a 
wave of serenity washes over you, soothing your spirit and calming your mind. As you float along in your magic bed, you feel that this place is a deeply healing place. It heals your body and mind. It melts away any remaining tension or weariness. The river carries you deeper. into a cozy world, revealing hidden wonders along its path. You see breathtaking formations of crystal and gemstones glowing with a gentle radiance. The air is filled with a delicate fragrance of moss and earth, which only further enhances the soothing atmosphere of this sleepy realm. With each passing moment, You feel yourself surrendering more deeply to the tranquility all around you. Everything that you know fades away. After some time floating along the beautiful, magical river, the magic bed carries you home. to the little house in the little village in the little room and you feel so 
safe here. Cradled in the knowledge that you have had. It's late afternoon when there's a soft knock on your window. At first, it's only a small knock, but from time to time, it becomes more urgent and also somewhat more impatient. Surprised? You eventually look at the window, and you see a white raven sitting there, looking at you sternly. In its beak, it carries an envelope made of parchment, which hangs down a little at the sides. You both look at each other, and when you don't react, it continues to pound on the window. Finally, you decide to open the window, and the raven immediately drops onto the sill and drops the parchment. Barely released from its beak, the letter flutters wildly around the room like a small bird it briefly touches your nose and finally lands on your head. Carefully, you take it down and see that it has been sealed with a crest. The coat of arms on the seal shows a large, powerful looking castle and below it is written School of Magic for Aspiring Wizards. Curious, you break the seal and open the letter. Immediately, a feather and a leaf spring forth, and the feather begins to scratch across the leaf. It writes in an ancient handwriting that your presence as a student of magic is desired. A list of needed utensils and some magic dust are enclosed so that you can get everything you need. As you read, a well-filled golden bag and list immediately manifest on your hand. Feel into your hands and perceive the weight of this bag. You may also feel a special power emanating from it and a slight tingling in your hands. Maybe you are a bit surprised, but deep inside a little voice tells you that you can get involved in this adventure. Feel free to open the bag now and think about your list of spell supplies. Imagine crumbling some dust between your fingers. 
Think of the first words or symbols that come straight to mind, and in no time you'll be in a small secret market in the heart of an ancient city. The small street with its well-worn cobblestones and old oil lanterns looks as if it hasn't changed much for many hundreds of years. Old chestnut trees adorn the avenue and their golden leaves sail gently to the ground. On the right and on the left there are many small stalls and booths with unusual displays. In one of the displays, you see many large cauldrons from which it steams and hisses vigorously. As you look at all the cauldrons, you see lots of people stirring something in the pot. A shimmering liquid bubbles steadily in the cauldron. It smells like flowers, and then again, like something unusual that you have never smelled before. As you move through the market, you encounter the most diverse set of people. There are people with elaborately embroidered capes, but also small elf-like creatures, which glide almost translucent over the alley. A shimmering white horse with wings on its flanks is leashed in front of a building. Its proud stature and gentle eyes remind you of a pegasus. Everything here seems to you as if from another world full of magic and wonder. At the end of the street, you see a marketplace where many people are gathering. A large sales cart has driven up, and a very old man with a long white beard and a richly decorated cloak stands in front of his cart. He is selling the best ones in the world. Students of magic and lots of aspiring wizards and witches stand around him in amazement. Use your imagination now and paint the picture in your mind of this wondrous place in all its facets. The mysterious magician and his customers in their magical cloaks. Above the head of the long bearded man float wooden sticks which spray small sparks. They conjure the most interesting things. At one point, the image of a dangerous dragon appears, breathing fire as it moves towards the spectators, only to transform at the last moment into a beautiful rose, its leaves slowly falling to the ground. 
fascinated, you notice a piece of paper magically appear in your hand. It begins to rustle softly. You look at the piece of paper and notice some writing appearing. The writing glows golden and the word wand shimmers on the paper. You look towards the sales card and the old man with the long beard and you guess that you're in the right place. One by one, the old wizard serves his customers. He leads each one into his cart, and with a box in hand, they leave happy. When it's your turn, the old man gives you a knowing look and leads you inside too. His treasures are stored there in many mysterious boxes and crates. Some are quite dusty, others radiate a special power and shine out of the box. Sometimes a wand comes out of its box by itself, and the wizard hands it over to you. But it's only when a very special wand rises from a hidden corner and comes flying to you that you feel a connection to it. Carefully and delicately, it lands in your hand, and you feel its light weight. Feel into your hand, and also imagine a gentle pulsation. Very gently, powerful energy flows through you. From your hands, into your upper body, even to the tips of your toes. Feel it, and connect with this power. Notice your one and the connection to your deepest core. Let it dance through the air, and imagine that there is now a trail of light following it. Now, think of something that you would like to pay the wizard with, and wave your wand again. Give the first thing that came to your mind and appeared to the wizard as payment, and thank him. Now, look back at the magic piece of paper, your list. Stop again at the stall selling cauldrons and herbs. It is crowded with small and large cauldrons, some of which are still bubbling away. A witch with tangled hair and a friendly smile on her face has seen your list from afar and hands you a smaller cauldron. She tells you that it's shrunk 
but just for the moment. And when you get to the magic school, it will transform to the size you want with the magic of your wand. Again, you wave your wand and whatever you desire to pay the witch with appears in front of you. You hand it to her and as a thank you she hands you some healing herbs which you keep in your cauldron. After that you make your way to the next stall and the one after that until only one is left. There's something very special here and it's state-of-the-art brooms. A broom is, so to speak, the basic equipment of every wizard or witch. The brooms are sold at the very end of the marketplace. From time to time, there is a merchant just standing in the middle of the way. If you walk on without hesitation, everything automatically moves aside, as if it had never been there. There is a soft crunching sound, and dust clouds form as the stalls slide to the side. In front of the display, a broom sweeps the street all by itself. Another whizzes across the marketplace and plays lots of tricks. Sometimes it sweeps away the hat of a magician who, cursing loudly, picks up his headgear from the street again. Other times, the broom hops behind the children and sometimes nudges them so that the children chase the broom. Smiling, you step up to the display and the salesman comes up to you. He sees your magic list. In no time at all, he presents you with the most beautiful broom. But you take your time to look around. And in a small corner, you discover your broom. Something tells you this belongs to me. Take it in your hands and feel the wood it contains. Feel how smooth it is and also the slight vibration and pulsation. Feel inside yourself and perceive the connection. Take your time with it. You thank the vendor and wave your wand again for a suitable payment. You say goodbye and you look at your list. Did you get everything? Well, then you can go home again in peace and quiet, or perhaps to a dreamy place, 
a place where you can feel comfortable and relax. How about a beautiful mountain meadow, surrounded by many fragrant flowers? Just imagine it, and rub some magic dust between your fingers from the bag you brought with you. And there you are. You can put the things on your shopping list aside for now, and just enjoy the surroundings. The night sky shines wonderfully and pleasantly over the meadow. Thousands of stars shine in the firmament, and you are standing right under them. They shine so intensely and clearly that they illuminate your surroundings. Lie down now and feel the soft meadow beneath you, and the pleasant scent of the many flowers. A fine wind blows over you and you enjoy their smells. Let all the images of your magical shopping experience pass before your inner eye once again and feel a magical power within you. Who knows, maybe you will discover the school of magic for aspiring magicians in your sleep. Soon you will be able to explore it, but there is still time for that. Perhaps, for your restful sleep, your bed may be a better choice. Use your magical dust one more time and feel yourself being transported back to your bed. Just imagine it, and rub some magic dust between your fingers from the bag you brought with you. And there you are. It's also night here, 
But maybe you'd like to change the weather. Again, use your imagination and change it to a gentle rain that accompanies you throughout your night. Soon the soothing sound of rain tapping against the window greets you. Just let the sound wash over you, feeling your muscles relax and your mind quieten. The sound lulls you into a deep and peaceful sleep. Filled with dreams of magical adventures and enchanted journeys. You smile to yourself, knowing that the enchantment dust and the surroundings will always be there to bring you peace and relaxation whenever you need it. Now, return to your deepest rest. Just imagine yourself having a wonderful time. Drift into a deep sleep. Feel the softness of your muscles. Listen to your breath for a while longer. And feel the security of this place. Enjoy the peace within you. As it begins to sink deeper and deeper. Hear the gentle whisper of the wind. Far beyond the clouds and in a distant place, 
A white raven is waiting for you. The wind carries its call to your room. Listen to it and enjoy its gentle whisper. The raven tells of a castle floating over a mountain of clouds in a far off land. It's a magic school for aspiring magicians where everyone finds their place. And you too are already expected there. Perhaps you still remember going to the market of magic, where you got all of the utensils you need. Your magic wand, a cauldron, shrunk down in size so it's easy for you to carry, and a broom. Something tells you to get ready, to get those things and pack them together. And in no time, the white raven arrives to you. See how its feathers shimmer in the silver light of the moon. Its wise black eyes look at you knowingly. And maybe you feel an immediate deep connection with this animal. Imagine how its feathers might feel to the touch, and allow yourself to notice a warm and pleasant sensation deep within you, and just know that you can trust this feeling and you already sense that something wonderfully magical is waiting for you. And through this image of the white raven, you are already with it. You glide into a wonderful state between dream and reality where thoughts give you wings to glide into the far away distance. There, in your inner space, your imagination can unfold freely, and every fantastic story has its place here. Imagine now that the raven is so large that you can comfortably sit on it. It bends down, and you make yourself comfortable on its back. Feel its feathers under your seat, and notice the pleasant warmth of its body. Your new companion flaps its wings, and you feel its strength. In a wonderful way, you feel as though it is your strength too. Notice this energy deep within you, and feel it circling through your entire body. You may also feel a slight vibration or pulsation from the crown of your head to the tips of your toes. Slowly, the raven soars into the air, and you feel the wind brushing past your body. 
It is almost like a gentle touch. So wonderfully light and pleasant. Flap by flap, you gain height. And you see your house below you, your street, and eventually your entire familiar surroundings. As you get higher, everything becomes smaller and looks like toys from another world. The moon shines through small patches of clouds, and you can see the glow of the streets and houses. Feel how pleasant it is to fly. So incredibly weightless and light. The raven flies powerfully over the landscape. And the wind carry you further and further. Take in this boundless freedom and what it really means to be completely detached Enjoy this moment of flying over vast landscapes and picture it in every detail. Mountains, rivers, and wide open fields pass by as you glide with the winds. Fly on the wings of the wind. Be completely light and escape the confines of everyday life. Leave your burdens and stress behind. and enjoy this wonderful moment, being completely mindful. The wind carries you further and further. You feel the warm comfort of the feathers and see the sparkle of the stars above. They accompany you and point the way to the magical castle. After some time, you arrive at a castle that sits on a gigantic disk of rock. And this disk, as if by magic, floats amidst huge clouds. The closer the raven gets, the clearer this wondrous world becomes.
The castle stands in the center of this disk, surrounded by beautiful grounds. Hundreds of trees and bushes are in full bloom and glow in so many colors. Flower beds have been planted and the blossoms shine in competition. Breathe in the floral air deeply and take the scent within you. A waterfall pours from a tall tower into a river, teeming with life. The water provides energy to all living beings and plants. And who knows, perhaps even some magic. Colorful birds fly over trees and bushes, chirping. Butterflies in the most beautiful colors shine in every ray of sunshine. Exotic animals frolic on the meadows and graze peacefully. Everything here is in perfect harmony. Your raven flies circles around the castle and then you see that the weather changes. Suddenly it is winter and snowing and the landscape is covered in a white blanket. Ice crystals shine in the sun and the waterfall at the tower is frozen. Little snow rabbits dart over the park's meadows and it is wonderfully quiet. Only the soft whisper of the wind reaches your ears. You fly more circles, and so you see the different seasons. Sometimes it is autumn, with all the colorful autumn leaves that shine so beautifully. And then it is spring, and the spring flowers glow powerfully in the light of the sun. Then, with a few flaps of the wings, the raven sets you down on a summer blooming branch. The tree is so huge that its branches reach all the way up to the castle. Before you know it, the tree has lifted you up, and then it's just a small hop into the castle.
on the walls, you see various paintings that constantly change their appearance. Sometimes, a grumpy, grey-bearded knight looks at you. And other times, it's a beautiful woman with the smile of a Mona Lisa. The castle creaks softly, and you feel that the corridors and rooms also change constantly. A red-bearded dwarf comes clattering down the corridors and greets you with a smile on his face. He indicates that you should follow him. You feel very safe here. And so, you wander through the huge corridors and you hear someone singing behind the old wooden doors. Then something squeaking. And sometimes a dog howling. A group of young adults comes towards you, laughing and each one has a wand in their hand. They wear black hats on their heads, and glittering dust occasionally appears around their bodies. After several minutes of following the dwarf, you arrive at a small, nondescript door, tucked away in a quiet corner of the castle. The dwarf produces a key from his pocket. He unlocks the door, gestures for you to enter, and then hands over the key to you. Inside, you find a small but comfortable room with a sturdy wooden bed, a chest for your belongings where you store your magical items and a small table and chair. The walls are adorned with colorful tapestries, depicting scenes from local legends and myths. A small oil lamp on the table casts a warm glow over the room providing a cozy and inviting atmosphere. There isn't much time, though, the dwarf tells you, as the opening ceremony is about to begin. So, you go out of your room Lock the door and keep your key, and you follow the dwarf further along the large corridors and hallways of the castle. The dwarf has now led you into a huge room with vaulted ceilings, and the ceilings seem to consist 
of pure crystal. It glows green at times and blue at others. Its colors constantly change. In the room, several other students are already waiting to be admitted to the magic school. A tall and imposing looking headmaster greets the new students with a deep, resonant voice and looks around the room wearing his black nickel glasses and a smile. On his shoulder sits the white raven that brought you to the school and it playfully pecks at his cloak. If you like, you can now join the line of new students and observe everything. The grey bearded headmaster touches the shoulders of each one with his wand, closes his eyes and whispers magical words softly. Look closely and observe in your inner imagination what else is happening. What do you see? Let your imagination run free. Each new student thanks the headmaster quietly, and then it's your turn. Imagine what it's like when your magical teacher touches your shoulders and powerful energy flows through your entire body. Feel the power flowing from your shoulders into your head, down your arms, and all the way to your toes. Feel it and allow yourself to absorb it into every cell of your being. Enjoy this stream of energy for a short while. Perhaps you also see colors and feel their healing effect. Deep in your heart, you now know. Here, in this place, I can experience strength 
and healing. Allow yourself to let go and simply feel the power of this place. You may now sit at a long table and enjoy the celebration of your arrival. Simply imagine something to eat and drink and it will appear around you. You see all kinds of magical creatures. Some have a human body, but the head of a lion and another looks like a forest troll. All magical and non-magical beings are represented here. Welcome. You belong here too. There is celebration and laughter. And you see dishes floating in the air. Then, gently sinking down to their respective places. Little elves float through the vault and their clothes glow and shimmer in all colors. From time to time There is a gust of wind that makes the candles of the room flicker. When this happens, a room, a corridor, or even the weather has changed. Everyone takes everything calmly and celebrates together into the evening. A band of gnomes Play happy and lively music, and the sounds blend with your surrounding noises. It is a symphony of happiness and contentment. Let yourself Be caressed by this soothing sound carpet and feel the security of this place. You feel the pleasant heaviness of your limbs 
Notice the warm pulsation in your body. Everything is relaxed and pleasantly warm. Listen to your breath and notice its calm rhythm. You bid your new friends farewell. And it's time to return to your room. The door opens to reveal your cozy space. with the comfortable bed and a soft glow from the magical lantern on the nightstand. You slip under the covers and feel a sense of calm wash over you. The events of the day replay in your mind, but they now seem distant, like a pleasant dream. As you drift off to sleep, you might feel grateful for this new magical world and all of the adventures that await you. You sleep soundly knowing that tomorrow will bring new wonders and surprises. Now, slowly sink into your restful sleep and welcome your drowsiness. Tomorrow morning, you will be completely rested and refreshed. You will feel new power and new energy And who knows, maybe a little magic too. Good night. Sleep well. Now, always remembering that you are completely safe. Allow your mind's eye to begin to see a forest, a warm, inviting forest, a place of comfort and peace. As I tell you, 
tonight's sleep story. There once was a forest. A forest far, far away from here. So far away, in fact, that anything you have ever known or thought about has never been heard of in these parts. Now, this place was known for one thing, and one thing only, a pervading sense of peace and calm. Oh, and did I mention fairies? The fairies live in this special forest, but they only show themselves to those that they feel deserve it. And tonight, my friend, you will stay in a cozy treehouse in the fairy forest. And let's see if one of the fairies or many of the fairies come to visit. It's nighttime in the forest. The stars shine above. And you are high up in the canopy. Your treehouse perches elegantly amidst intertwining branches as moonlight falls from above. The wooden exterior of your treehouse is quite beautiful. It looks as if it comes from another time, weathered and moss-covered. It blends seamlessly with the surrounding trees, making it almost invisible to anyone who might be passing. From its windows, you gaze upon layers of endless green. The rustling leaves create an orchestra of whispers, with the occasional luminescent flash hinting of the fairy folk. Inside, the treehouse is furnished with every comfort imaginable. Velvet cushions adorn a cozy nook by the window, where a collection of books rest, their stories echoing the mysteries of the forest. A wooden table stands in the center, covered with a cloth, embroidered with silver threads, depicting scenes of dancing fairies. Above the table, 
hangs an ornate chandelier, its crystals refracting the ambient moonlight, casting soft pastel glows across the room. Tonight, as you recline in your treehouse, perhaps you sense the forest coming alive. Gentle winds sway the trees, carrying with them the fragrance of the evening. And it isn't long before the first of the fairies approach, curious about who rests in the treehouse tonight. They seem drawn by the warmth and safety of the treehouse. They hover at the windows, watching you with sparkling eyes. You remain still, sensing the privilege of this magical encounter. Every so often, a brave fairy darts inside, leaving behind a trail of stardust. And with each passing hour, as the lines between reality and dream blur, you feel an overwhelming connection to this forest and its magical little inhabitants. The night has only begun in this enchanted realm. And so it would seem that you are deserving of an encounter with these magical little creatures. Whatever you desire, they can bring it to you. So go on, make a wish, and feel it materialize in your mind. With every passing moment, you feel yourself fall deeper and deeper into a state of calm and tranquility. The shimmering light of the fairies enchants you and urges you to continue to focus on your most heartfelt wish. 
their delicate voices, harmonious and kind, encourage you to visualize every detail, every nuance of your desire. The more vividly you picture it, the closer it seems, as if it's right at your fingertips, waiting for the perfect moment to manifest. The fairies dance in intricate patterns. Their glowing forms weaving through the air like paintbrushes on a canvas. Painting your wishes into existence. Perhaps there's a warmth that you feel here, a comforting embrace that reassures you that everything is as it should be. At the core of this serene moment, there is a profound realization, the power of manifestation isn't just in the hands of these mystical beings, but that power is within you as well. The fairies merely act as guides, reminding you of the innate potential you possess, helping you to unlock the doors to your deepest dreams. You watch the mesmeric dance of the fairies. Here, you are so far away from all that you know. Your cares and worries do not exist here. You are allowed to fully immerse yourself in this moment. You are safe here. You are welcome. The canopy above is a tapestry of stars, each one twinkling with a brilliance that seems to echo the glow of the fairies below. The moon in its full splendor, 
bathes the forest in a silvery light, creating an otherworldly atmosphere. It's as if the night itself joins the dance, playing a lullaby of tranquility and serenity. Even the trees of the forest seem to sway gently to the rhythm of the fairy dance. Their leaves rustling in soft applause. Every little creature Every blade of grass, every drop of dew, seems to be in harmony, resonating with the pure, undiluted joy of the moment. It's as if the very essence of life, in all its myriad forms, is celebrating its existence right here with you as its honored guest. Here, in this secluded corner of the universe, you are reminded of the simple joys of existence and the beauty of the present moment. The fairies sense your deep contentment and they come closer. Their soft humming, a melody of welcome and comfort. You feel like you belong here. Perhaps you feel accepted by the fairies. This is your sanctuary. A realm where the heart finds solace and the soul rediscovers its wonder. One kindly fairy in particular comes and sits in front of you. This fairy emanates a gentle, motherly glow. Her little wings, delicate and translucent, 
shimmer in soft lavender and pale gold. Her eyes are deep pools of azure, holding within them the wisdom of aeons. She's not bigger than your hand, and she floats before you, her movements graceful and unhurried. As she comes closer, a subtle aroma of blooming jasmine fills the air. She speaks. I sense a weight upon your heart, she says to you, her voice melodic and soothing. In this sanctuary of ours, you are free to release any burdens that weigh you down. Speak your troubles, and let me help you find the solace you seek. With her invitation, you feel a gentle nudge from within, urging you to open up. There's no judgment here, no expectations. Only understanding and compassion and kindness. Whatever challenges or physical pains you carry You tell her about them, and with each word, perhaps you feel a bit lighter, as if the very act of vocalizing your pain begins the healing process. The fairy listens intently, her gaze unwavering. She occasionally nods, acknowledging your experiences and validating your feelings. Once you finish, she takes a moment and gathers her thoughts. She speaks again. Every pain, every problem is but a moment in the vast tapestry of life. While they shape us, they do not define us. 
I can help you release this burden. But remember, the true strength lies in accepting and growing from these experiences. She extends her little hands towards you, palms up, and as you place your hands over hers, A gentle warmth radiates from her touch. It starts as a tiny spark, but soon engulfs you entirely. This warmth seems to seek out the pain, enveloping and soothing it, before drawing it away. Leaving behind a profound sense of relief. As the process unfolds, the fairy's glow intensifies, acting as a beacon of hope and reassurance. When it's over, she smiles at you, a smile that speaks of love, understanding, and the promise of a brighter tomorrow. The forest seems to hush as you prepare to bid farewell to the fairies with a heart full of gratitude you turn to the fairies who have gathered around Thank you, you whisper. The gentle fairy who assisted you floats closer. Her touch, light as a feather on your shoulder. Sleep well. She whispers, know that you're always welcome here, in this haven of serenity. The fairies float into the night. And you settle in to your cozy treehouse. Your bed awaits, 
draped in soft linens. And as you sink into the plush mattress, it molds perfectly to your form. A gentle breeze from an open window caresses your face, carrying with it the earthy aroma of the forest. The lullaby of the night beckons you into a world of dreams. You feel protected, loved, and connected to this place. In this sanctuary, you fall into a blissful, restorative sleep, holding the memories of your encounter with the fairy close to your heart. You are floating on a beautiful little stream in a faraway land on a little wooden boat And as you sit back in the boat, a very comfortable boat, your heartbeat slows, your breath deepens as the boat gently takes you along the stream. The boat does all of the work for you and is bringing you into a world of wonder and tranquility. The landscape around you is like nothing you've ever seen before. Lush greenery, blooming flowers, and gentle rolling hills are all bathed in a soft golden light. The air is filled with the scent of jasmine and honeysuckle, and a gentle breeze caresses your face. The boat meanders along slowly, and you feel so safe now. as the water's surface reflects the beauty of the world around you, adding to the dreamlike quality of this place. As you drift along, 
you begin to notice that the light is changing, becoming more ethereal and luminous. The boat gently enters what looks like the entrance of a cave, but this is no ordinary cave, and you feel so safe as the world around you transforms into a magical, calming, healing underground world of beautiful crystals. The walls of the cave are lined with sparkling gems, each one radiating a unique color and energy. Now the crystals, they seem to pulse with life and cast a soft mesmerizing glow that fills the space with warmth and serenity. Your little boat continues to glide through this subterranean wonderland. And perhaps you feel a profound connection to the crystals. Each one resonates with a different part of you. Touching your soul healing old wounds and reawakening forgotten dreams. Slowly, gently, you reach out to touch a crystal and its energy flows into you. A gentle wave of love, wisdom and peace. The sensation is indescribable. A merging of your essence with the very fabric of the universe. Time loses meaning in this magical place and you lose yourself in the beauty and the healing energy of the crystals. The boat moves slowly, carrying you further into the cave And perhaps you feel cozy here. Maybe you feel yourself becoming lighter, 
freer and more in tune with the world around you. The sound of the gentle lapping of water against the boat becomes a soothing melody, harmonizing with the soft glow of the crystals and the gentle embrace of the dream. You are safe. You are loved. And you are exactly where you need to be. Here, you are completely away from everything. This is a world where worries don't exist. In this mystical realm, you find yourself completely disconnected from the anxieties that may have troubled you in the waking world. As you are nourished by this gentle stream, it's as though you have stumbled upon a hidden reservoir of pure, untainted joy and tranquility, where the complexities of life dissolve into a harmonious melody of love and kindness. Perhaps in this place, you become aware of certain feelings and emotions surrounding you. It's neither overwhelming nor intrusive, but rather a feeling of profound understanding and compassion. Perhaps you come to know that the love and kindness that prevails here is not a mere abstraction but a tangible force that permeates everything. It reaches into the deepest corners of your being, soothing old pains and relieving burdens you didn't even realize you were carrying. With each passing moment, you find yourself becoming more and more attuned to this extraordinary place. Your senses are heightened. 
Yet, you feel an unprecedented calmness enveloping you. The air seems to hum with energy. And the gentle sounds of the flowing water and the soft glow of the crystals create a symphony of serenity that resonates with your very soul. Perhaps you realize in this moment that this world is not merely a figment of your imagination, but a very real part of you, a place where you are free to be your true self, unencumbered by judgment or fear. It's a place of boundless love and profound healing, a sanctuary for your soul and a reminder of the innate goodness that resides within us all. Maybe here in the embrace of the crystals and the gentle caress of the dream, you find a home, a place where you are eternally welcome and where you can always return whenever you need to remember the essence of who you truly are. As you float further through this enchanted underground world, away from everything, allow the sensation of deep peace to be about you. and allow your awareness to begin to gently focus on a specific area within you that needs healing. A place where you've perhaps felt pain or loss or fear. This awareness should not be jarring. You are safe. It's just a natural invitation to explore. 
deeper aspects of yourself in this safe and loving environment. The crystals seem to respond to your inner focus. Their glow intensifying. Their colors becoming more vibrant. The energy of the cave shifts and aligns itself with your healing journey. The boat slows and maybe you feel a profound connection between yourself and this magical realm, a symbiotic relationship where healing is a shared dance of love and trust. The specific crystal that resonates with your healing need begins to emanate a soothing light. You can feel its gentle pulsation, a rhythmic heartbeat that seems to speak directly to the part of you that requires healing. The energy is neither forceful nor demanding. It's a tender offer of support a delicate embrace that acknowledges your inherent worthiness of love and wellness. The healing process unfolds organically as the crystal's energy merges with your own. Maybe it feels like a gentle touch on a bruise. Maybe a warm hug during a moment of sadness. Or maybe a soft whisper telling you that everything will be all right. The pain or discomfort that you may have felt begins to dissipate, replaced by a sensation of relief 
and renewal. Your body, mind and spirit respond to the healing energy, absorbing it willingly as if recognizing a long lost friend. As the healing progresses, realize that this process is not just about mending a specific part of you. It's intended to nurture your entire being. The love and kindness that prevail here infuse every cell of your body. Every thought in your mind. Every emotion in your heart. The healing becomes a journey of rediscovery, a gentle reminder that you are a being of light and love, deserving of health, happiness and wholeness. Here, in the company of these magical crystals, safe in your little boat, on the little stream, perhaps you find the courage and grace to heal to grow and to embrace the beautiful complexity of your true self. You are in a forest, a beautiful forest. It's nighttime. The moonlight shines down upon the ancient trees, and you sense, perhaps, that there is something magical about this place, something otherworldly. As you walk, allow everything to disappear. Anything that is happening in your life, let it go as you immerse yourself in this special place. You stop at a tree, a huge tree. It looks like a redwood or sequoia. It is so wide, you could walk around it and be tired by the time you finish your walk. There is something so humble about this tree. Something so timeless. It has stood in this one spot for thousands of years. 
Imagine that. Imagine all that it has seen. It has known a very different world. And now you have the privilege of standing here. Touch it. Feel how calming it is to just simply be in communion with nature. Take some deep breaths now, in and out, in and out, in and out. Now, you continue your walk, looking up at the stars. shining brightly down upon you. How astonishing, how stunning they are. In your mind's eye now, single out one star and allow yourself to make a wish, whatever you like. Now, pick another star and thank that star for everything that you have in your life. You keep walking through the forest, the soft earth beneath you calms you and adds to a sense of serenity and peace. Eventually, you turn a corner, and in the distance, in a clearing in the forest, you see an enchanting, beautiful castle. Remember, you are completely safe here. This is a safe and welcoming place. You decide to explore the castle, and you walk towards it. It looks like an old French castle, very ornate and detailed, and extremely beautiful. You see in the windows little candles burning, which just add to the welcoming glow that the castle gives you. Once you arrive below the castle, you see that there is a staircase leading to the main door. You climb the stairs, and each step that you take, you feel more and more relaxed. 
an even greater sense of peace comes over you. Whatever this place is, perhaps it offers you a level of serenity that you have never experienced. Approaching the top of the stairs now, each step still bringing you to deeper and deeper peace. Finally, you arrive at a stunning wooden door. It's huge, three times your height. And you notice a little sign on the door. It reads, You have been blessed to find this place. All are welcome to find peace and grace. Feel free to enter, and if you want, have a read, or find a bedroom, and have a deep sleep. The sign on the door further adds to your feeling of security and ease as you push the great door open and enter this magical castle. All around the castle is lit by candlelight. And one thing that amazes you is that on all of the walls of the castle, there are beautiful paintings of all of your favorite things. And as you look around the castle at the different pictures, whatever you want to see on the paintings appears. Whether it be some of your favorite people, favorite places to visit, or favorite activities to do, it's like magic. This place really is magic. You walk along the splendid marble floors. And each room that you pass through makes you feel more and more relaxed. The smells here are amazing. All of your favorite smells travel throughout the castle. It really feels like this castle is just for you. The finest of fabrics, the most precious of materials, Adorn every room. Eventually, you arrive at another big doorway. And this door has a sign above it saying, The Library of Voices. 
you're not sure what that means, but you're looking forward to finding out. You push the great door open and walk in to the most astonishing library you have ever seen. Hundreds and thousands of huge bookcases line the walls, and a beautiful glass-domed roof sits above. You can see the stars through the glass, and it just adds to the magical feeling of being here. You walk through the library, and you see so many familiar books. The whole library is lit by candlelight as well. The soft glow is so grounding and comforting. You see a book that you would like to look into, Pride and Prejudice. You take it off the shelf and find a chair next to a warm open fire. You sit down in the unbelievably comfortable chair and open the book on a random page. Mr. Darcy's letter to Lady Catherine was in a different style and still different from either what Mr. Bennet sent to Mr. Collins in his reply to his last. Dear sir, you close the book. You're not sure what just happened, but what seems to have happened is when you opened the book, the book started talking to you and telling you the story within. You open the book again on the same page. I must trouble you once more for congratulations. Elizabeth will soon be the wife of Mr. Darcy. Console Lady Catherine as well you can but if I were you, I would stand by the nephew. He has more to give. Yours sincerely, etc. Miss Bingley's congratulations to her brother on his approaching marriage were all that was affectionate and insincere. She wrote even to Jane on the occasion to express her delight and repeat all her former professions of regard. Jane was not deceived, but she was affected, and, though feeling no reliance on her, could not help writing her a much kinder answer than she knew was deserved. The joy which Miss Darcy expressed on receiving similar information was as sincere as her brother's in sending it. Four sides of paper were insufficient to contain all her delight and all her earnest desire of being loved by her sister. You close the book again. Yes, it was true. The book 
really did speak to you. Perhaps you are amazed by this, and you would like to see if it is true for another book. You peruse the great bookshelves and eventually find the complete works of William Shakespeare. Just as you sit back down, it begins to rain, and the rain falls on the great glass roof above you. How comforting it is. You open Shakespeare on a particular page. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold. Tis not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business, do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there, they in her head, the brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. You close the book and realize that you have just heard one of the great speeches by Shakespeare as Romeo sits looking at Juliet on her balcony in Verona. You are now, perhaps, enjoying being read to by the books. And so, you go and find another. This time, you find the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde.
You sit back down in your sumptuous chair and open the book near the beginning. The studio was filled with the rich odor of roses and when the light summer wind stirred amidst the trees of the garden there came through the open door the heavy scent of the lilac or the more delicate perfume of the pink flowering thorn. From the corner of the divan of Persian saddlebags on which he was lying, smoking as was his custom, innumerable cigarettes, Lord Henry Wotton could just catch the gleam of the honey-sweet and honey-colored blossoms of a laburnum whose tremulous branches seemed hardly able to bear the burden of a beauty so flame-like as theirs. And now and then, the fantastic shadows of birds in flight flitted across the long tussle silk curtains that were stretched in front of the huge window, producing a kind of momentary Japanese effect and making him think of those pallid, jade-faced painters of Tokyo, who, through the medium of an art that is necessarily immobile, seek to convey the sense of swiftness and motion. The sullen murmur of the bees shouldering their way through the long, unmown grass, or circling with monotonous insistence round the dusty gilt horns of the straggling woodbine seemed to make the stillness more oppressive. The dim roar of London was like the Bourdon note of a distant organ. In the center of the room, clamped to an upright easel, stood the full-length portrait of a young man of extraordinary personal beauty. And in front of it, some little distance away, was sitting the artist himself, Basil Hallward, whose sudden disappearance some years ago caused, at the time, such public excitement and gave rise to so many strange conjectures. You close the book and allow all of this to settle in this amazing place that you find yourself in. You put back the picture of Dorian Gray, and you find one last book, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. 
You are feeling tired now, though. And so, you decide to find a bedroom. You walk through the castle, leaving the library behind. And eventually, you come across a small little door, almost so small that you have to crawl through it. Once inside, you look around the room you find yourself in. It's the most majestic bedroom you've ever seen. A huge four-poster bed sits in the middle of the room, and a great fire burns and keeps the room warm and cozy. The light is low, and once again, your favorite calming smells pervade the air. You climb the little stairs that lead to the bed. And you lie down under the covers in this unbelievably comfortable bed. You still have your book with you, Meditation. And you decide to read to help you fall asleep. You open the book. A man must not only consider how daily his life wasteth and decreaseth but this also, that if he live long, he cannot be certain whether his understanding shall continue so able and sufficient for either discreet consideration in matter of businesses or for contemplation, it being the thing whereon true knowledge of things, both divine and human, both depend.